Mr. Otis, when I tell you my home is haunted, I do not exaggerate. Haunted it is, I regret to say. Horribly, hideously haunted. Lord Canterville, you know that's scientifically impossible. <laughs> my dear sir, I only wish it were. Poor Lady Stutfield, that beautiful throat. She carries the marks of it this very day. Now, what if such a thing were to happen to your wife? Oh, I feel very sorry for the ghost that tried that with my wife. If there were ghosts, Lord Cannibal, we would have had one in our American circuses long ago. Now tell me something. Have you ever seen it? Uh, fortunately not. Lord Cannibal, you cannot do this to me. When my bank asked me to come here to take over our London branch, my wife said to me, Hiram, I will leave our beloved Minnesota on one condition that when we get to England, we live as lords and ladies in a real old British castle. Now, Canterville Chase was just the ticket. You agreed to rent it to me, sir. I wrote to her and told her she's on her way right now with the children, and I do not believe that you will welch on the deal. Sir, but Canterville does not welch. I'm warning you about the ghost because I like you personally. And out of the great respect I have for your country. And for yours. We have much in common. We have everything in common with the one exception of the language. <coughs> no, Mr. Otis, I cannot allow you and your good lady to take any risks. There is no risk, sir. Believe me, no ghost is going to worry Lucretia or me. And as for the children, my daughter is an incurable romantic. The boys will love it, where they'll play with it on rainy days. No, no please, I beg of you, rent us your castle lock, stock, and barrel. And ghost, Mr. Otis, and ghost. Agreed. Don't say I didn't warn you. Miss Omni, our housekeeper. Miss Omni, it's my wife. Good evening, madam. How do you do, Mrs. Omni? And this is our daughter, Virginia, Mrs. Well, Omni, and our sons, Jefferson and Lincoln. We call them stars and stripes. <laughs> <laughs> the wee angels. right now. James is only ma'am. I'm sorry I scared you. I didn't mean to. Honest. I am sure you did not. But child, child, remember, 
Those who meddle with fire sometimes get burned. Mrs. Omni, what's this writing on the window? It's only an old rhyme. Well, tell us what it says. Unless you'd rather not. Oh, no, my dear. You'll know it all soon enough. It says, When the golden girl can win prayers from the lips of sin, when the barren almond bears, and innocence shall shed its tears, then shall all the house be still. Peace will come to Canterville. Oh, how beautiful. Oh, it sounds like prophecy. <laughs> well, what does it mean? Alas, madam, nobody knows. Would that we did. Would that we did indeed. We shall shortly be serving supper, madam, if that is agreeable. Very agreeable, thank you. Jefferson. Yes, we'd like to see our rooms now, Mrs. Omni. Yes, sir. All in, boys. Oh, oh Mrs. Omni, there seems to be a, something spilt there on the floor. Yes, madam. Blood has been spilt upon that <gasps> spot. Blood? Oh, how awful. Mrs. Omni, I'm not accustomed to having blood spots in my entrance hall. Now, please have it cleaned up at once. It is the blood of Lady Eleanor de Canterville, who was murdered on that very spot by her husband, Sir Simon, in 1575. There is his portrait. He only survived his wife by a few weeks. He disappeared under mysterious circumstances and his body has never been found. It is his guilty spirit that haunts the chase. The bloodstain cannot be permanently removed. Lucy, I think it's high time the good old American know-how came to England. <laughs> Mrs. Omni, this is Pinkerton's Paragon Detergent and Champion Stain Remover. <laughs> Guaranteed to remove any stain from anything. Any stain from anything. Oh, no, madam, I beg you, you know not what you do. There, you oh. see, I knew Pinkertons would do it. Oh, oh, oh Sonny, this is a... Hira, what are we going to do with a housekeeper who faints all the time? We could deduct it from her wages, like breakages. Maybe that would stop. Oh, forgive me, madam. But after 50 years in this house, my nerves are not what they should be. I have seen things here that would make any Christian's hair stand on end. Oh, sir, oh, madam, may Providence guard you all. Oh, don't you worry about us. We Americans don't believe in ghosts, you know. Oh, we do believe in supper. <laughs> Lucy, did you pack my hairbrush? Come along, Jefferson. <laughs> Breakfast ready yet? In just a moment, sir. Oh, oh good morning, Hi. darling. Oh, you look pale this morning. Oh, I didn't sleep too well. Wasn't that a terrible storm? Oh, it wasn't that awful. Mm. I don't think I've ever experienced such a storm. I was awake half the night. Bet you really does, it is. I mean, it's two million. Right, boy. Denise, what did I tell you? Mom, father, everybody, quick, look! The stain's back! I told Stars to stay me back and he didn't believe me. You owe me a million dollars. No, I don't. And you know something? It's redder. What, Mom erased it. We saw her erase it. Oh, my dear, there are more things in heaven and earth. Well, we'll just have to erase it again. And see if it's there again tomorrow. I fear it will be. We'll see. Mrs. Omni, this is the third day in a row that I have cleaned up that stain. Now, I just can't stand any more of it. I mean, it's not hygienic. 
Ah, uh, madam, what did I tell you? Miss Sumner, you're not suggesting that the ghost did this, are you? It is done by no living hand, Mr. Otis. There's not a soul for miles around would venture into this part of the house after you retire. I would not myself, not for a king's ransom. Cross my heart and hope to die. You know, Hiram, I'm, I'm becoming quite intrigued. There's some sort of a, a society of psychic phenomena I've heard about. Now, don't you think we ought to investigate it? My dear, when I see a ghost with these two eyes, I'll admit they exist. And when I do, I'll admit I was wrong. Will you, Father? Oh, indeed, Stripes. You'll learn that it takes a big man to admit when he's wrong. country air is so relaxing. I think I'm going to bed. Are you coming, dear? Yes, in a minute. I want to put these papers away. All right. Come on. Consideration for other people. I teach them not to play ghost in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. ah, ah! Well, you must be signed of the Canterville. I run the orders, sir, at your service. My card. Uh -huh. Well, golly, I, I've never seen a ghost before. And, well, it's a pleasure meeting you. But you know, you've got to do something about those chains. They make a terrible racket. In fact, I think I've got the very thing for them. Wait right here. What is it? It's a ghost. Yeah. Oh. Tammany Rising Sun Lubricator, guaranteed to give satisfaction on the first application. Oh. This doesn't work. There's plenty more where this came from. But do it now, do you understand? Then maybe we can all get some sleep. Nice meeting you, sir.
of a Canterville ghost. I've never been so insulted in all my death. How dare they? Pillows! How dare they? Don't they know a great ghost when they see one? Crass colonials! But even they, even they must know my reputation. Haven't they heard of the, of the 420 heart failures I've caused? The 16 cases of lifelong lunacy? Not to mention those 12 suicides. 13 if you count the, that half-witted footman who tripped and fell downstairs into the cellar. Machine oil! For an artist! Well, that is what I am. If I say so myself, an artist, a great artist. Who else? Who else? could send four serving wenches into screaming hysterics simply by, by grinning at them through the curtains. And what was I wearing? Nothing. A skull and a shroud. Oh, spotted with graveyard mold, I admit, but nothing, nothing really frightening. But that sort of thing is, is all in the night's work. It's nothing. It's nothing compared to my, my truly celebrated performances, my justly celebrated performances. Black Isaac, the huntsman of Hogley Wood. <laughs> Ah, oh, what sport I had that evening in 1648 when I made the wicked Lord Canterville my quarry and hunted him to a muddy end in the waters of the goldfish pond. <laughs> Pillows! Dumb Daniel. The suicide skeleton. The sensation of 1772. <laughs> Poor old Madame de Tremoyac. I'll never forget her face when she awoke to find me, as Dan, seated at the foot of her bed reading her diary. <laughs> and what a diary. Machine oil. 1815. And what was the topic of the day? Waterloo? No. Me. As Martin the Maniac. Now, what other ghosts, I ask you, what other ghosts you know could, could achieve so much with, with such economy? But there must be a reason. I, I've never failed before. Of course, Adelpate that I am. These people are provincials. And how do you first appear before them? As Gibbon of the Gibbet or the Thing of Bexley Moor? No, you stupid spectre, you. You appear in everyday dress to Americans who are not used to ghosts, who need the obvious. Bones, white draperies, headless horsemen. So what are we going to give them, eh? Red Reuben or the Strangled Babe? Jonas the Graveless or the Corpse Snatcher of Chertsey Barn? No, no. No repeat performances for them. We're going to give them something special. A new creation. A masterpiece that will teach them a lesson they will never forget. I'll show them. I'll show them. Pillows, huh? What's bread and eggs, Sonny? Uh, scrambled eggs, poached eggs, boiled eggs, and bacon, and uh, kidney. Oh, and... Uh, there's deviled bones. Um, we'll both have a little of everything, please. You'll do nothing of the kind. Henry, please give them a reasonable portion of bacon and eggs when they sit down. Oh, but Mother, we must have some of those deviled bones. Yes, they might be ghosts. <laughs> Virginia, did you hear? Yeah. Are you scared? Well, only at first. I thought he sounded sad. I felt sorry for him. I expect he was sorry for himself by the time we were through with him. I bet. Oh, boy. Well, Dad, I guess you're a pretty big man this morning. Oh, why is that? Because you've got to admit you were wrong. Because ghosts exist. You mean last night? Could have been a nightmare. That lobster Thermidor was very rich we had for dinner, Lucy. <laughs> well, Ma, we thought we heard you talking to him. About an oil for change. Oh, did you? And uh, we didn't think we were dreaming. Because I found the bottle of oil on the floor outside your room. <laughs> All right, boys, I admit it. Ghosts do exist, but we must not harm the Canterville. This castle is really more his than ours. And it's very impolite to throw pillows at a ghost. Oh, you didn't. Right through him. It got rid of him, didn't it, madam? Mm -hmm. Oh, sir. <laughs> the blood stain. Not another red. No, miss. It's emerald green. Emerald green? What was that? The front door, madam.
Good morning. Um, I do hope you don't mind my barging in like this, but I heard you'd arrive. I'm your neighbour, Charles Cheshire. How do you do? How do you do? Hiram Beodis. Nice to know you, Mr. Cheshire. Oh, but excuse me, sir. This is his grace. Oh, Mrs. Abney. His what? His grace, the Duke. Duke? You're a Duke? Uh, the Duke is next to a king. I know that's silly. And I'm, I'm Lucretia Otis. Oh, it's very nice to meet you, I'm sure. And, and, and these are our sons. This is uh, our oldest son, Jefferson, Hello. and our youngest son, uh, Lincoln. <laughs> oh, what do we call you, Duke, Grace? Uh, Duke Charles. Call me Charles, if you like. Charles. Oh, uh, well, we were, we were just having breakfast. Charles, won't you join oh, us? Oh, no, no, thank you. Uh... Oh, Virginia. Oh, this is our daughter, Virginia. Virginia, this is our new neighbor. The Duke of Cheshire. Oh, no. Only where to call him Charles. Oh. Hey, Charles, have you seen the Canterville Ghost? What? Oh, the ghost. You know about that, do you? Of course. We think it's great. But Virginia's scared. I'm not scared. I really don't know whether to believe in it or not. What do you? But of course I do. All the best English country houses have ghosts. <laughs> we have a white lady. <laughs> But they're very run of the mill, I'm afraid. Ours isn't run of the mill. Remember, they said you were a Oh, I'm sure no ghosts would, would bother you. Oh. I, I hope you like being here. Very much. Oh, she likes it so much she can't sleep nights. Oh, that's terrible. You'll get ill. Fresh air is what you need. I say, you wouldn't like to come for a drive, would you? I mean, I, I could show you some of the countryside. It's very pretty. Well, yes, how very kind. Oh, wonderful. Miss Otis. Thank you. The children will love it. I know. Yes. 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 Baron Armand that's mentioned in the prophecy. It looks all right to me. Oh, it's alive. But it never flowers, so it never fruits. When the Baron Armand bears innocence shall shed its tears. It's beautiful, isn't it? Oh, yes. I guess uh, Cannibal Chase is quite a cottage compared with where you live. Well, yes. But I don't live there now, it's let, thanks to my ancestors' extravagance. I live on one of the smaller farms. Oh. I run the estate myself. It's rather a pretty farm, actually. I think you'd like it. All right, come on. with me. Why can't I think of something? It's almost midnight. If I could fall back on foul Phineas, the phantom fiend, that worked wonderfully well when Lady started, saw it in 1702. She only survived three days, one of my records. I've done that so often, it's not much of a challenge. Well, there's Rupert the Reckless, the headless earl. He turned Lord Raker's wig grey in a single night. I really should keep that up my sleeve in case of emergencies. I have it. Why didn't I think of this before? If this don't freeze the very marrow of their bones, my name is not Canterville.
Don't move a muscle. I'm fat, you bet. Car! All right, Caliban. Hold it right where you are. I've got you covered. Now let's get one thing straight. You can haunt this castle any way you want, but you've got to do it quietly. Do you understand? I've got a bank to run, and I have to get some sleep. Put your hands up. Where'd he go? To Canterville, come back here! That's not fair! Strikes, check that armor. Stars, look up the chimney. Hey, what? it's up here, not here! Oh, right. Let's check the library. Come on. Oh! Sir Simon, after considerable thought, I have come to the conclusion that this terrible moaning and groaning that you do in the middle of the night yes, yes. must be caused by indigestion. Mm. Now, as a mother of three, I am fully appreciative of the distress that indigestion could cause. So I have brought you this famous American remedy. All you do is take one teaspoonful and you dissolve it in a glass of water and just Drink it down. Uh, it's nice and fizzy, and you'll feel all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed in the morning. Please, Sir Simon, please take it, because I'm afraid we're not going to get a decent night's sleep until you do. I'll just leave it right here. Thank you. Good night. There he is, up there! Uh, oh, the Caterpillar, oh, you stay right where oh, you are! Oh, oh. Oh, the vulgarity. The gross materialism. Bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, indeed. Oh. oh, the embarrassment. How could it have happened? It never used to weigh so much. I managed it perfectly well the last time I wore it at the tournament. I was even complimented by the Queen. Pretty suit, dear faith, Sir Simon, said my liege lady Elizabeth. And a pretty compliment, madame, quoth I. But not so pretty as she who pays it. Whereat I vow, she blushed. Ah, virgin queen, ah, Gloriana. Those foul children, they must have fastened it to the floor. Or am I, am I getting past it all? Never! I can do it yet and send them back to that colonial wilderness of theirs, broken in body and mind. Of course, they're not worthy of all this effort. If they can't appreciate a spectre in armor, anything I do is wasted. Just bread on the waters, pearls before swine. But I owe it to myself, to my art. It is a challenge, I will meet it, and vengeance shall be mine. I first appear before them with a ghastly screen, eerie music, a tempting, but I should surprise them with silence and stealth. Of course, I could turn myself into the Black Hound. I haven't done that for a long time. But knowing them, they'd only throw me a bone. No, I think I'll give them something different. A repertoire of roles. It'll be very tiring, but well worth it. I'll start with the Otises. As Gibbon of the Gibbet, I will first awaken Mrs. Otis with a clammy hand upon her forehead while I whispered her quivering husband's ears all the dreadful secrets of the tomb. Then, those loathsome boys, and oh, I shall enjoy this. First, I will awaken them to see what no man has lived to describe. Black Barnaby, the vampire Benedictine. Then, then I'll sit upon their chests. Virginia, Virginia, well, I might give her a groan or two, or maybe twitch at her coverlet. I don't want to frighten her too much. So I will rely upon my old friend, Jonas the Graveless, the corpse snatcher of Chertsey Bar.
draw it was the first ghost I'd ever seen. Oh, horrid sight. Oh, no wonder people are so afraid of me. Now that it's getting light, I really should go and make its acquaintance. If we joined forces, we might bring those revolting children to heel. And after all, two ghosts are always better than one. My ally, my partner. Ye Otis Ghost, ye only true and original, beware of imitation. Oh! Oh! Oh, those beastly boys! Those beastly boys! I'll show them who's true and original. Let me get at them. No. No, that would be too merciful, too quick. They will suffer some endless agony. I have it. A curse. I'll put a curse upon them. When the cock croweth twice, deeds of blood will be wrought and murder stalk abroad with silent feet. Once! Come on, come on! Oh, pernicious bird, crow, will you? The maids, the maids. I cannot let the servants see me like this. Oh, spoiled again, spoiled! Where did you learn? My uncle has a farm in the country. Ah. <laughs> this is splendid news. I can well believe it. <laughs> oh, poor Sir Simon. You know, it must be terrible being a ghost. Neither one thing nor the other. I think about him often. Fortunate ghost. Oh. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Fulfill my obligations if I have to, but I haven't the strength anymore, I know. Now, let's see. Bloodstain, bloodstain. Thinking about bloodstain, oh well, good, we can give that up for a start. Tragedy, though, after 300 years, but they don't appreciate it. Oh, here it is. It is thy solemn duty to walk the house once a week and wail beneath the great window on the first and third Wednesdays in the month. Nothing about costume, nothing about cautions against being seen or heard. Oh, really, it's too mortifying, but so be it.
Right. You ask for it. Rupert the Reckless, or the Headless Earl is here. Don't go. Dear child, only be a minute, I promise. I let you go on one condition. What's that? That you marry me. Mr. Junior, I mean you no harm. And even if I wished to, I could not, for I'm tired, so tired. I'm sorry for you. I really am. My brothers are going back to school tomorrow, and for then if you behave yourself, no one will bother you. Don't be absurd, child. How can I behave myself? If I have to rattle my chains and, and, and groan through keyholes and stalk the house at night, it's my only reason for existing. Oh, that's no reason for existing. Your poor wife. Poor wife, indeed. She was plain at the pike staff. She never had my roughs properly starched. And her cooking was simply abominable. But bad cooking is no excuse for a man to murder his wife. Oh, isn't it? No. Well, anyway, I paid a dreadful penalty. Her brothers locked me up and starved me to death. Are you hungry? I could get you a sandwich. No, I never eat nowadays. But thank you just the same. You're much nicer than the rest of that horrid family. I like that. And you've done your level best to scare us. I stole all my paints just to keep up that absurd bloodstain. I never told on you, even though it was most ridiculous. Who ever heard of emerald green blood? Well, really, what else was I to do? Anyway, my blood was blue, the bluest in all England. And as for that stain, that was tradition, but of course... You Americans, you don't respect that sort of thing. All the Europeans say that. Just because we don't have any ruins. No ruins? What about your political system? I will go straight to Father and ask him to keep the boys oh, no, here. Miss Virginia, no, please. No, not that. Please. I'm sorry for what I said. It's all because I'm so tired and unhappy and I don't know what to do. I would like to go to sleep, but I cannot. I have merely to go to bed and blow out the candle. I haven't been to sleep for 300 years and I long for it. I long for it. Ghost, have you know where you can sleep? Far away beyond the pine woods, there is a garden where the grass grows long and deep, and there the great white stars of the hemlock flower. The nightingales sing all night long, the moon looks down, and the yew tree spreads out its giant arms over the sleepers. You mean the garden of death? Yes, it must be so beautiful, so beautiful to lie in the rich brown earth, with the grasses waving overhead, to listen to silence, with no yesterdays, no tomorrows, forgetting time, forgiving life, to be at peace forever. I could, Virginia, if you would help me. You could open the doors of death for me, for love is always with you. And love is stronger than death is. I? Yes, you. You know the prophecy on the great window? Yes, but I don't know what it means. It means that you must weep for me, for my sins, for I have no tears. And you must pray with me for my soul. 
I have no faith. And then, if you have always been sweet and good and gentle, the angel of death will have mercy upon me, but you must intercede with him for me, Virginia. You must, you must. You must? Yes, you. Because you are the golden girl. You will see dreadful shapes in the darkness, and fearful voices will whisper in your ears, but they cannot harm you. How do you know? Because against purity, the forces of evil cannot prevail. Help me, Virginia, help me. But what about me? Will I get back? You are my one hope forever. Please help me. Oh, thank you, Henry. Oh. And is it true what those boys of yours tell me? Have you really got rid of the ghost? Stars and Stripes did. You bet they did, sir. <laughs> More tea, Lady Canterville? No, thank you. Where do you go for your tea? Boston. Excuse me. Oh, what is it, John? Have you seen Virginia? Well, no. Well, Charles, I thought she was with you. Yes, she went to change her frock. She's been gone 40 minutes. Excuse me. <laughs> Virginia. Virginia. Lucy, we've searched the entire castle. She's simply not here. Lord Cannibal, are you sure there are no secret rooms? Not that I'm aware of. Well, let's get outside, boys. Try and eat something, my dear. No, I couldn't. I, I couldn't eat a thing. What time is it? Nearly midnight. Oh, All right, boys, get those weapons. Lucy! 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 No luck, no luck, but I'm going to telegraph Scotland Yard first thing in the morning. Oh. We're going to get their best people on this immediately. Virginia! 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 Virginia. Oh, Virginia. Where have you been, oh, Virginia? You were tall over before your mother's been half oh, frightened to death. Now, where have you been? Been with a ghost. I'll never frighten anybody again. He's dead. And at peace. It's been very bad. But he's truly sorry for all that he'd done. He gave me these jewels before he died. Come and see.
as much as it hath pleased Almighty God of his great mercy to take unto himself the soul of our dear brother here departed, we therefore commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Canterville, this is your property. These are your heirlooms. No, my dear sir, they're nothing of the kind. Hubert! My dear, nothing is an heirloom that is not mentioned in a will. Besides, I'd like Virginia to have them for her marvelous courage. <laughs> and I really do believe if I took them from her, Sir Simon would be out of his grave in a fortnight, leading me the devil of a life. <laughs> they're yours, my dear, with my most grateful thanks. Come, you female. Besides, I'd like you to have them as a wedding present. Ha <laughs> ha. Wedding present? No, I... Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, I believe in the principles of Republican simplicity and the equality of man, and I don't hold with titles. No, no, you're a good fellow, Charlie, and I like you. But no daughter of mine will ever be a duchess. Virginia. Virginia, I don't think a wife should have secrets from her husband. Dear child, I have no secrets from you. Yes, you have. You never told me what happened when you were alone with the ghost. Don't ask me that. I can't tell anyone, even you. Dear Sir Simon. My dear Sir Simon. I owe him so much. Why? He made me see how important life is. And what death really means. And why love is stronger than both.